This morning, I want to talk to you about our core beliefs. Our core beliefs. I want to talk about what we believe. And I don't know if you know how important it is that you monitor what you believe. Your beliefs determine your actions. Your beliefs determine your choices. Your beliefs determine your walk, your talk, your relationships, who you will hang out with and who you won't hang out with. Your beliefs determine what you'll listen to and what you'll read and what you'll watch on television. And ultimately, your beliefs will determine your eternal destiny. Let me thank all seven of y'all for that, of rousing in there. It determines a lot of things. In India, in the country of India, they have a huge hunger problem because they won't eat certain animals because they believe in reincarnation. In India, they believe that when you die, you come back as something else. So they won't kill an animal to eat it because they might be killing their grandmama. That's true. So they won't kill cows, chickens. That's probably why there's not a black, lot of black people in India. They won't kill rats. Rats are considered, all of them are considered sacred because of what they believe. And the reality is, I don't have to ask you what you believe. All I have to do is follow you and it will be evident in just a few days. You don't come to a nine o'clock service on Christmas day unless you believe. or your parents made you come has such is such the case with some of my kids. So the question is, what do you believe? What do you believe? I mean, really down to the core of who you are, what do you believe? Not, not what you put credence in, not what you acknowledge is what some people believe, but really what do you believe? That's a very important question because when we stand before the Lord Jesus on judgment day to give an account for our choices, our actions, our decisions, our behavior, and even what we believe, when we stand before him, we won't be able to trick him. You can trick people into thinking you are saved, but you can't trick the Holy Ghost of God. So I want to give you five core beliefs, five core beliefs, five things that are critical for your belief, for you to believe. And this is about, look at your neighbor and say, this is Bible study since we don't have Bible study right now. I want to give you five things that you have to, must believe. I, you know, I, I want to push this on you. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to drive it into you because um, the devil, listen to this, the devil will do everything he can to try to make you question these five core beliefs. He'll do everything in his power to make you question God, doubt God, question these beliefs. But my assignment is to try to press into you how important it is for you to believe. The first thing we got to believe is, number one, the inspiration of the scriptures. Did somebody say the inspiration of the scriptures. That means, let me, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, jot this down, verses 16 and 17. For, this is, these are some, all of these are familiar passages. I'm just trying to put them in a the context of highlighting and reminding you 
what it is we're supposed to be convicted in. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Stick a pen right there. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Here's what that means. That means that the scriptures were written by men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write what they wrote. That's very important because the devil would have you believe that the Bible was written by white men to keep black people in bondage. Well, if what I am in is in bondage, let me stay right in bondage where I'm at. That, that's what the devil wants you to believe. That devil wants you to reject this, but it's inspired by God. It's, it's a remarkable thing that over the course of some 1,600 years, God took the writers of the Bible and spoke to them at different junctures of time, and they complemented each other. They confirmed each other. They never contradicted each other. One prophesied about what was going to happen. The other wrote about what did happen, and yet God inspired it all to happen, and it all fits together to give us the plan for our life this Bible is inspired by God. Now the devil wants you to think there's a whole lot of different books and a whole lot of different things to believe, but we are persuaded and I am convicted and I am determined in the core of my mind and my heart that I know that this book is inspired by the Holy Ghost. It was not written by men. It was written by men inspired by God to write what they wrote. It's important for you to put your faith. That's why I can put my confidence in this scripture right here because of what I believe. Now, if you think this book is just a book written by men, you can't put confidence. You, can, you won't obey it. If you just believe it's a, 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 a book written by, by men, then when you hear it being taught, you'll walk out and keep on living the way you're living. But I, I made the mistake, uh, Brother Elders, uh, I made the mistake uh, of thinking that that people came to church believed the Bible and that you didn't have to you didn't have to articulate and argue with them about trusting the Bible but I'm coming to find out that you can teach all you want to in the Bible but the people will walk right out of here and do what it is they want to do and I'm here to tell you that one of the core things we have to believe is that this book and everything in it is inspired by God Nobody has to articulate or argue with me or fight or prove to me. I don't have to be, I, nobody has to make me believe this thing. I believe it to the core of my being that this is God's word for our lives. It is the God-breathed word of life. And I believe that. Here's number two. Here's the second thing I believe is important, a core belief, is the virgin birth of Christ. And that's why we put so much focus on Christmas it is a celebration of the virgin birth of Jesus. Now look at Luke chapter 1 and verses 31 and verse 35. Let me read these two verses to you. Luke chapter 1. Oh, somebody having a good time over there. <laughs> verse number 31 says, and behold, you will conceive in your womb. Verse 30 says that the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Let me back up. Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Y'all see that? Slide down to verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Now this is an important thing. What's important is that Jesus was born of a virgin. Now why is that important? Because if in fact she conceived of a man and, and she wasn't a virgin, then it could be said that what was in her was from a man. And if she was conceived by a man, then that, that birth is the same as any other birth. And Jesus' blood is no different than our blood. And his blood could not wash away all of our sins on the cross. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. If, 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 it was, if he was not conceived of a virgin, if it was not of the Holy Ghost, then he's just like Muhammad and just like Buddha and just like Confucius. But Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit of a virgin. I wish I had a praying crowd with me 
here today. It, his blood is different. His blood, because his blood is not from a man, his blood can wash away all of our sins. His blood can break every shackle and every chain in our life. His blood can forgive us of our sins. His blood can make us whole. Go on and preach, Pastor. His blood can do for us what no other power on earth can do. His blood can change us. I believe in the virgin birth. That's why this day is special. It is a significant day. It is marking the fulfillment. Man, while I'm on this point, can I say something while I'm, can I add something in here that ain't in my five points? Mary had had a prophecy prophesied to her that she would give birth to a son called his name Jesus. She said, how can this be since I've never been with a man? I'm about to tell y'all something. God will prophesy stuff to you that you don't think could possibly happen. Y'all not hear what I'm saying to you. We serve a God who will speak your future into your life before it even happens. And all your job and responsibility is, is don't question the prophecy. Ride the course out until God brings it into fulfillment. Ride it out. Somebody say, ride it out. Don't quit till you get to the fulfillment. Don't walk away until it's manifested. Some people get frustrated because it doesn't happen as quick as you want. And my assignment is to tell you, hang on in there. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. He will bring it to pass. He will open the door. He will make it happen. Who am I preaching to today? Mary had a prophecy given to her. And she received and accepted that prophecy. And many of you today, got, God's got prophecies over you that you don't think is going to come to pass. My assignment is to declare to you, don't question God's ability to bring to pass what he promised to you. She had the prophecy, had never been with a man, and yet God brought it to pass. And it was a fulfillment, it was a, it changed. As a matter of fact, not no who almost forgot this point right here. The fact that 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 Jesus was born of a virgin and conceived by the Holy Ghost does something else about this virgin birth. It makes him fully man and fully God. He he is God wrapped up in human form. He is he is God coming to earth. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. It is God loving us enough to leave his place in glory and come down through 40 and two generations and be born of a virgin, wrapped in swollen clothes, laid in the manger. He did that because he loved us. Y'all better be glad I'm not God. I ain't leaving glory. I ain't leaving heaven to come down here to see about y'all. Here's number three. I got to hurry up. I'm acting like I got all day. Oh, that's right. I, uh... So, so we believe in the we believe in the inspiration of scriptures. Don't make anybody. Don't let the devil make you question that. We believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. That's very important. That his birth was of a virgin. Number three, we believe in the death of Jesus on the cross that redeems us. We believe on the death of Jesus on the cross that redeems us. In, in other words, he died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. Uh, when he hung on the cross and died, God took the sins that we had and laid them on Jesus. He, he took the whipping that you and I deserve. This, this is important again to believe to your core, not, not, not just did you believe Jesus existed. You got to believe that, that Jesus, when he was hanging on the cross, he took the whipping that you should have gotten. Look at your neighbor and say, you deserve the whipping. Look at him on the other side and say, you should have got a real big whipping with your nasty self. Here's what 1 Corinthians 15 says. Jot this verse down. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Paul is talking to the church in Corinth and he says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. What did he receive? 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures there's something to shout about right there Christ died for our sins I don't know where y'all are I don't know there's some people here today who don't really to their core believe that God Jesus took the punishment for you but this is what this is what this is you know this thing is so powerful you know God could have made salvation so hard we, we could have had the dot I's cross T's we could have had to travel to a certain place face a certain direction bow down a certain number of times we could have had to buy indulgences we could have had to sacrifice a lamb and the, we could have had to do a whole lot of things but God said I'm going to take care of all of that for you and you're not going to have to kill no more lambs, no more doves you don't have to face in no certain direction you don't have to go to a certain city he says if you just believe if you just believe that he died on the cross for your sins now I don't know why y'all I believe that to the core of my being I believe it with everything that's in me that he died on the cross for me. Y'all missed it. I didn't say for us. I said for me. In other words, if the rest of y'all wasn't here, he would have still came and died just for me. Somebody ought to give God a shout that he loved you enough that he would have came down and died for you. Oh, I feel a shout coming on me today. I don't care how much you've done, how recently you did it, how nasty you are, but thanks be to God, he died for your sins and my sins, and for that I will bless him all the days of my life. That's a core belief, that he took the punishment for our sins. <laughs> Ooh, my God, excuse me. God punished him for our behalf, for our behalf. He, he, Jesus stepped in and took the whipping that was the equivalent of you spending an eternity in hell. The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin. He took it upon himself to become sin. He took our sins on him. And he redeemed us by doing that. He, 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 he took the sins on himself and, and matter of fact, uh, what he did is so significant and so special when he, when he grabbed all of our sins and put them on himself that when God saw that Jesus became sin, he had to turn his face away. And that's when Jesus said, oh my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But it was only for a minute. <laughs> it was only till he went down in the grave. Y'all not hear what I'm saying to you. Because that brings me to point number four. Is that Jesus was buried and raised from the dead. So, so we, that's my core belief. That he died on the cross, number three. And number four is that he got buried and rose from the dead. Oh, I feel a shout on that point. What does that mean? Here's what it means. When he got buried, here's what's significant about him being buried. When he got buried, when he was buried, he went and carried our sins and buried our sins with him. Somebody in here ought to be grateful that all of your sins been buried. Woo! Hallelujah. Why is this important? It's important because the devil will try to remind you of what you have done. But it's up to you to remind the devil that Jesus has buried that. I'm talking about. High five your neighbor, say it's buried, it's buried, it's buried. My stuff is buried, my sin is buried, my, my wrong is buried, my immorality is buried, the lies I told are buried, the places I went are buried, the things I thought are buried, buried, buried. That's, that's, 
That's what I believe. Listen, some of you are suffering from guilt. You're suffering from guilt. And until you recognize and believe that he died to bury them, the devil will continue to keep you guilty. But when you believe, you transition from guilty to guilt free. <laughs> They said, but I'm guilt free now. My sins have been washed away and buried. It's important. It's important that you know that when he went to the grave, that's a significant thing. Our sins are buried. Oh man, I, I could just shout on that point right there. Because I, sometimes the devil tries to remind me of my sin. But I'm learning now that instead of me entertaining and feeling bad, <laughs> I learned how to tell the devil, it been buried, dog. That been buried, that been buried, that been buried, that been buried, that and that and that and that. All of that's been buried, everything. Last year got buried, year before that got buried, yesterday got buried. And hold up, tomorrow will be buried. Next week we'll be married. Hey! Hey! Buried, 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 buried. Hold on. Did I say Barry and he got raised from the dead? Here's what 1 Corinthians 15, 4 says. I'm almost finished. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Woo, I believe that to the core of my being. Now, why is that important? The resurrection is important because if he didn't get raised from the dead, Paul says our preaching is in vain. And he said our faith is in vain. What does that mean? Why is that important? Because his resurrection is what distinguishes that he is the real thing. Y'all y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Muhammad didn't get up out of the grave. Buddha didn't get up out of the grave. Confucius didn't get out of the grave. I can go on down the list. Sun Young Moon didn't get up out of the grave. I can go down the whole list of all of those who, who died, but they still dead. I serve Jesus because he's not dead. He is alive. And you got to believe that. You got to know to the core of your being that he's alive. And why is that important? It's important because the same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that gives us brand new life. Anybody here got new life? Anybody here changed? Anybody can look back and you ain't the same person that you used to be? Anybody here been, been transformed? All I'm trying to tell you is that the same power that got Jesus out of the grave is the same power that changed you. And I'm trying to tell somebody in here today who does not think that your life can ever change, I'm here to tell you that the same power that got Jesus out of the grave will give you brand new life. 
Do I have a witness anywhere in the house? I'm so glad he got up out of the grave. I got one more thing and I'm finished. Man, I, I could just shout on all, that's enough just to shout on right there. That he was buried and raised from the dead. Somebody said, well, you don't know if that's true if he got raised from the dead. Here's what I tell people all the time when it comes to the fact I wasn't, no, I wasn't there. Uh, but I believe the scriptures and the scriptures say he got up out of the grave. Scripture said 500 people saw him at one time, unless they were all delusional. <laughs> but, but here's how I know. And I went to Israel, went to the place they said he was buried. I said, I got to go over there because they told me he ain't there. And I just need to confirm for myself. <laughs> Not that I needed it, but I went and looked inside and he wasn't there. Somebody say he was not there. Tell him on the, I, I got to hurry up. My granddaughter want to go home so she can see her gifts. I see her falling asleep right now. Let me hurry up and bring it. Let me bring it to a close. Let me bring it to an end. I'm about to say something profound. Oh, oh here's how I know. It's because he was, he was raised in my heart and in my life. I know I've been changed. I'm not the same. We used to sing a song years ago, say, I know I've been changed. The angels in heaven have changed my name. And maybe today you don't feel like you need that change. But there's going to come a time that you're going to want a change in your life. You're going to get sick and tired of the way you live it. You're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm telling you, if you just believe in Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, he will make you brand new. Number five, I'm out of the way. Hallelujah. Here's my fifth and final thing that's our core belief. Jesus is coming back again. Here's what Revelation 1, 7 says. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 says, And behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so, amen. I like that. See, so he's coming back, and the people who crucified him are going to see him. And the people who rejected him are going to see him. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today? Amen. Whether you believe he existed and whether you believe he's coming back or not, there's going to come a day he's going to come back, and you're going to see that he is the real deal. In Revelations 22 and 12, jot it down. I'm coming to a close. I'm bringing my plane in for landing. Revelations 22 and 12 says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. There is coming a day and a time when Jesus is going to come and capture and rapture us out of here. And I don't know about you, I can't wait till that day comes. I'm looking forward to his coming. People don't preach about it too often these days, but let me be assured to let you know he is coming back again. And I hope that you are ready. I hope you got your house in order. I hope you've dedicated yourself to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I hope you have embraced these scriptures as the inspirational, the word of God. I hope you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. I hope you believe that he died, that our sins might be redeemed from us. I hope you believe that he was buried and he rose again from the dead. I hope that the day when he comes back, you are in right standing with an eternal God Almighty. Please don't push this to the side. Make sure deep down inside that this is what you believe. Hallelujah. Somebody help me say to God, I believe God. I believe, I believe, I believe. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much. On this resurrection day, on this birth of Jesus' day, I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I give you the thanks for what you've done for us. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for dying on the cross for our sins, coming and leaving glory. And I pray today somebody today needs to put their faith in you, Lord. Convict somebody to say, I need Jesus. I need forgiveness. I, I need to be born again. I need to be regenerated. Somebody who's, who realizes they're not living the life you've called them to live, draw them to you today, almighty God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
crazy.